In the trucking industry, a large portion of tire problems are a result of underinflated tires. The Meritor Tire Inflation System by PSI offers a very efficient and simple solution to monitor and control tire inflation automatically. Installation is straightforward and easy to perform. We'll look at the steps necessary to properly install the MTIS system. Installation of the MTIS system begins by identifying the type of axle on the trailer. The most common type of axle you will work with is a hollow spindle or a solid spindle axle. We'll be working with the hollow spindle axle for our example. For procedures to install the system on a solid spindle axle, please contact your Meritor or PSI representative. And before beginning any work, be sure to wear safety glasses to prevent eye injuries. Some manufacturers ship their axles with top center identifier holes. You can use this hole as a pilot when you drill. The first step is to locate the top dead center of the axle and install the quick connect air fitting. This is the preferred location for all axles. At top dead center, drill an 11 30 seconds hole. Sometimes it's easier to drill a quarter inch pilot hole first. Be sure to drill straight into the axle. Then using tapping fluid, tap the hole with an 1 8 inch NPT tap and hand tighten the fitting into the hole. Use a wrench to tighten the fitting about two more turns and stop when it faces where the control box will be mounted. Next, remove the hubcap. Be sure to protect the wheel end assembly to guard against contamination and protect the bearings. Remove the spindle plugs from both ends. Be careful not to damage or score the inside of the spindle bore. Use a bore polisher to remove any sealant or machine marks on the surface of the spindle bore. If the spindle has cotter pins, use an abrasive tool to remove the metal burr edges from the inner face of the spindle bore. Now connect a cleaning rod to an air supply and slowly insert it all the way through the axle spindle. Get a flashlight and make sure all residue and debris has been removed, including loose rust. Repeat the cleaning if necessary. With a clean pair of protective gloves, clean the exposed o-ring and the outside diameter surface of one press plug. Also, remove any grinding dust, grease, or oil from the spindle bore. Be sure to protect surfaces from any contamination. Using a clean pair of protective gloves, apply a uniform bead of the provided retaining compound to the outside diameter of the press plug. Do not allow the retaining compound to contact any other surfaces. Insert the press plug into the spindle bore until the plug stops in the bore. Be sure the tapered end of the plug extends from the end of the spindle by 1 8 to 1 quarter inch. If you are installing a press plug with a thermal screw included in the Thermalert system, install the press plug with the thermal screw set at the 12 o'clock position. Next, install the correct press plug drive adapter on the drive handle. Insert the drive adapter into the press plug and use a four pound hammer to drive the plug into the bore. When the drive adapter bottoms out evenly on the face of the axle spindle, the plug is correctly installed. Be sure to remove excess retaining compound from the spindle surfaces, threads, and the installation tool. Install the stator into the press plug and hand tighten. Then, use a 5 8 wrench to tighten the stator approximately two and a half turns, or about 20 to 25 foot-pounds of torque to complete the stator installation. Completing the wheel-in starts with the installation of the PSI Ready hubcap and new gasket. Make sure that the 3 8 fill plug is on the top half of the axle spindle. Grease applications will not have a fill plug. Then, tighten the hubcap bolts to the trailer manufacturer specifications. Now, carefully push the through teeth through the hubcap to insert the stainless tube into the stator. Tighten the through tee to 45 inch-pounds. Check the alignment and if needed, the through tee may be torqued to 55 inch-pounds to align with the valve stems. Also, check that the hub relief vent is flush with the hubcap. Attach the hoses to the tire valve stems and hand tighten. Then, using a 7 16 wrench, tighten them one half additional turn. Once the hoses are installed, engage the valve core at the end of each hose to make sure air is flowing through the hose. We'll install them to the through tee later. Install the supplied control box mounting bracket to the subframe. This bracket may be bolted with the supplied hardware or welded to the subframe. Be sure to locate the appropriate place for the mounting bracket. The trailer has a slider suspension, the bracket needs to be attached to the slider box. To bolt the bracket to the subframe, start by drilling two 5 16 inch holes. 
Mount the bracket to the frame. Then use the supplied quarter inch fasteners to mount the control box to the mounting bracket. The supplied quarter inch washers go on the inside of the box. The pressure protection valve, or PPV, protects your air system if airlines are damaged. The air system must have a minimum of 80 PSI to open the valve to supply air to the automatic tire inflation system. Before beginning installation of the PPV, drain all the air from the tank. Mount the PPV to a spare port on the air tank. The top half of the tank is the preferred location. Be sure the slotted screw in the PPV is facing downward. Begin the airline installation by routing one airline from the quick connect on the PPV to the inlet port of the control box. Next, route the airline from the output port of the box to the supplied airline T. To complete the installation, route airlines from the supplied airline T to the quick connect fittings on each axle installed earlier. Be sure to leave enough slack in the lines to accommodate for suspension travel and use tie wraps to secure the tire inflation system airlines to existing airlines. The indicator light for the tire inflation system is mounted on the front road side of the trailer approximately 36 inches up from the coupler and as close to the radius as possible. Next, route the cable from the indicator light to the seven-way box on the trailer. Now, route the electrical cable from the system control box to the seven-way box on the trailer and connect the electrical cable to the flow switch inside the control box. Finally, make the appropriate electrical connections in the seven-way box to complete the indicator light installation. Now that the system has been installed, it's time to check it for basic operation and leaks. First, connect an air pressure source capable of supplying at least 120 PSI to the trailer glad hand, and also connect an electrical source to the front of the trailer. First, make sure that the tank drain valve is closed. Next, make sure that the system on-off valve is in the open position or in line with the valve body. Allow the system to charge. While the system is charging, now would be a good time to check the indicator light. Air will be moving across the flow switch to fill the system and the indicator light should be on. Now check for airflow at the through T by inserting a short piece of tubing in the through T fitting on each side. Air should flow from each check valve. Check for leaks by spraying a soap and water solution on all air connections. If any leaks appear, tighten the fittings and repeat the leak check. If the leak continues, replace hardware as necessary. Ensure that all tire pressures are reduced 5 to 10 PSI below the target pressure. Hand tighten the hoses to the through T using the knurled fittings. Allow the system to fill the tires to the target pressure. Refill the oil in the hubcaps and install the warning labels. And this completes the installation process of the MTIS system by PSI. If you have any further questions, please contact your Meritor Dry Force representative or the Meritor Entrac Customer Call Center.